Now, with today's equipment, let's take the Allen Telescope Array. Could you do it with that? I mean, can you self-confirm it by separating out two of the dishes and making separate observations with separate receivers and do it that way? Or do we not quite have that capability with that instrument? It's certainly better than nothing, okay? Yes, you can do that uh, with the Allen Telescope Array. You can form separate beams. However, it doesn't get away from the problem that the, of somebody's microwave oven because the telescope dishes are near to each other. They're only uh, tens of meters, a few tens of meters apart from each other, or even less. So it doesn't get away from the problem of, uh, of, of a very localized RFI or radio frequency interference that's affecting both uh, dishes. It doesn't get away from the problem of a lo localized hoax. So you, you, it, it helps. It's, a, it's better to, to, uh, if you, with the Allen Telescope Array where you can split it up into several beams, but it's not, a, it's not a, an ironclad solution to the problem. That's one of the things that always worried me about the WOW signal is that if you got some college student that's at the Ohio State University and they're like, I'm going to go and mess with the radio astronomers and just put a little signal into that feed horn and not the second one and <laughs> pull something like that because, again, that would that would explain the strong signal. But it, it, it is interesting. At the same time, though, do you think that with other signals – and there's only been a few that were really interesting. But with other signals, do you think maybe that we might have too stringent of criteria? Because sometimes, and I can't remember the name of the signal, but it actually repeated three times. And it was, you know, very, very weak. And then it was just basically abandoned and said, well, this is so weak, it's nothing. Do you think that that's prudent and to sort of not follow up on signals like that? Yeah, well, I, d I don't know which exact signal you're referring to, but it, but there are there are transients, and 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 our 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 SETI analysis is only as good as our uh, as the algorithms that we run. Uh, it could be that the signal looks different than our algorithms pick up. Again, it 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 really points to the necessity of doing SETI on multiple telescopes at the same time, looking at the same target. That's the that's the best check on the system because if you've got a a weak signal as you've characterized one that was marginal maybe it's something maybe it's not something if another telescope picked it up it would magnify the the significance of the observation many fold. Now John, there is a sort of elephant in the room in, in that what if we do detect a signal and we do find a you know a proof positive of the existence of an alien civilization out there somewhere. What do we do? You know, what do we do after detection? What is the the protocols that we should put into place once we find some kind of signal, whether near or far? In my view, um, the detection of a signal is SETI. It is science. But from the exact moment of detection and thereafter, it leaves the field of science and enters the field of public policy. SETI scientists at that point need to stand back, get out of the way, and just take a secondary advisory role to the main action, which has to be diplomatic. And so what I have recently called for is the creation of an of a international treaty governing all aspects of post-detection. And I regard this as extraordinarily urgent. And why is it so urgent? Because this is not a, we're in a very new age as of right now and as that, that anything that, that is here for existed for a lot of different reasons. One, because money is now flowed into, into SETI, there is more SETI being conducted today than used to be conducted in a whole year. So a single day of SETI is more productive today than a whole year's worth of SETI was just a few years ago. That's because of the money that is now with Breakthrough Listen in the SETI Institute, and very particularly because the Chinese are also in the field and also using their telescope, their radio telescope, which is the largest single dish radio telescope in the world, the FAST telescope, for the purposes of SETI. Because the Chinese are now in the field, that, that opens up a whole other host of, of issues. Will they 
immediately take their detection of SETI and, start, and share it with the world, just as our uh, SETI scientists are committed to doing? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I, I, my own personal bet is they'll stop, they'll stamp it top secret and, 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 and that'll be the end of the subject for as far as we, we understand it in the West. It's also because our leakage, our I Love Lucy signal, that's our television broadcasts of the 1950s and the radio signals before that, are, are expanding through space at the, at the speed of, at the distance of one light year per year. You know, more and more stars are coming within that envelope of our unintentional leakage. And therefore, we might be hearing signals from stars uh, that are close into us. And because the SETI today that, that, that we're doing is so much more powerful than the SETI we were doing in the past, the algorithms are more powerful, the telescopes are, are some, sometimes bigger and better, and particularly because of Moore's law, the back end has expanded you know, exponentially or the power of the back end. So there are all the, 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 these drivers, plus the fact that if, if, if I'm correct and that the first detection we make is of a local probe and not of a distant star system, that, well, that local probe every year is having more and more time to, to watch I Love Lucy in reruns and, and, and tap into our internet and, and learn our math from Khan Academy and learn our English from Sesame Street. And, and the likelihood keeps growing every year that that probe will have absorbed enough decoded enough that it feels confident enough, you know, if that's the term you can attribute to an artificial intelligence, to be able to then open up that channel of communication.